Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is Ergunner's Edge. Uh, so today I got my RWS 54 Air King out, uh, 22 cal. Uh, over the winter, this is all I'm going to be probably doing. I can't shoot really, so uh, I had a little issue with two issues: uh, inconsistent inaccuracy and detonation with heavy dieseling. So. I was off one mil dot at times at 100 yards. So the FPS was increasing greatly when it was detonating. So I'm just gonna take it apart, um, check the seal, see how much grease is actually in here. Uh, when this occurred, it was probably 90, 95 degrees out for that two weeks or about a week and a half. And that's when this actually started. So. I may just throw a new seal in here. I want to keep the original spring if it's good. I'll just polish everything up. Uh, trigger work. This is an immaculate gun. Um, I just want to get it back to shooting uh, the way it should be. So, just gonna. I meant meaning to do this anyways. Clean up the trigger. Clean up everything inside. And uh, being a higher end gun, you shouldn't have to do too much. Uh, my Y rock. I was very pleasantly surprised. I had to do very little inside um, compared to a Hatson <laughs> where that needs a lot more loving. Uh, but we'll just get right into this. And I found as the gun vise is nice, a bag and a wedge with a towel on it uh, seems to be working a lot better for me. So I'm going to use what works best. Uh, it's a little cold in my... Uh, area today so I do have a hat on you'll probably see my heads poking through a few times uh, I'm not going to go into too much detail on whole total disassembly of this gun uh, there are uh, not a lot out there but there are a couple uh, two screws you got some washers you need to look out for and All right, hold on. It's been a while since I've had this apart. Bring in two or three screws here. Can't quite remember. I don't think so. That's okay. I was gonna take the trigger guard off anyways. Kinda gets out of the way. Put all the parts there. There we go, just a little prying on it. And yeah, this one here has to be removed also. There we go, I know it was close. Okay, so I'm gonna put my fingers over the screws. Now you can see what's inside. Uh, you'll really have to do your research on this, and there are some good sites and uh, forums. As uh, far as the uh, <coughs> zero recoil system, uh, there's always recoil. It's just absorbed through uh, a system they have on here. Uh, this is pretty much just like my uh, <coughs> sorry RWS48, <clears throat> just a little more stuff added. course that's why I'm recording also because there are tons and tons of little parts you want to remember how they come apart and go back together okay see I even have some white marks here one line one zero so I know which one's front and back and in what direction facing up so I was smart enough to do that before Actually, I'm going to put these on the shelf so I don't lose them. Oops. As I said, it's been a while since I've done my 48. And I just want to make sure there's not too much difference. I think I can leave that all on there. This just comes all apart normally. So 
So we're going to start here. I'm just going to take this one out for now. And uh, a white cloth and try not to lose them. Come on. There we go. And you know what's a good idea for this? Nice small container. Uh, it's got some stuff in there, but. And there are spacers in between here. So you kind of have to keep track of that also. Uh. It's always a good idea to stick something through while you're pushing the pin out. Something smaller. There we go. Just had to take the pressure off. I'm just moving this around to make sure I can see the two washers on both sides. I heard it. There's one. The other one was stuck to it. Yeah. Keep that in check off to the side. As you can leave this handle on, or well, actually you can't, but I just get it out of the way as soon as possible. And I believe you cannot undo this until this comes out. Okay, now it's coming back to me. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's been a while since I've done one in RWS. But we can close this, turn this, but you do need this out of the way to get to the pins. So it is not for nothing. Okay, let's see. Where did I put that? piece that slides over. Well, oh, this might not be the one. I do have one already made up for this. No, the safety's right in the way. Huh, wonder where the one I made up for this is. Give me one second, sorry about that. I actually thought that was it. Either, but I wanted to try. One thing you don't want it to do is slip off, and that's what it's going to do. Yeah, my other one was notched right here, and that just slid past the safety and made a solid flat surface.
Okay. I'm going to take one out for now. I believe I did make dummy pins for this also. I'll have to uh, see about that. And you know what? These do prefer to go out one way. And I don't like to send the whole punch all the way through unless it's a lot thinner. And this is pretty close to being the exact same size. Uh, sorry about blocking the view here. I made up some dummy pins here. And I think I got it. Almost out. And I have to say this bag makes it so much easier hitting the pins out other than a block of wood or something like that underneath. There we go. Okay, so the dummy pin is in on the other side. Well, it's in the middle, I should say, just to hold the trigger there. Just gonna double check my clamp. Adequate pressure on it. Yeah, this one's a little tight. Tighter than I'd like. Unfortunately, my dummy pin just fell out, so I'm just going to put that back in and get it from this direction. Okay, so there's no pin holding that, but I'm just going to take this smaller and I'm going to release the pressure. Okay, yep, took up the pressure. Take it off just enough. Just want to make sure it's moving and it comes off. Okay, this I just post uh, put to the side right now. See if I can get this out. There we go. Okay, you can see the guide, uh, stainless steel washer. Not all that firm inside. Okay, I don't see any grease, which this is acceptable to me. Um, I hate tons of grease on a spring. That's not really the best way to stop the buzz. It is a way, but Now I'm gonna have to flip this over this way. Okay, you still have your handle right here. In here is there's a hole and you have to remove a long set screw. Sorry, my fingers are not working too good with these band-aids on. Uh, 
not sure if this is the size or not. It's a little tough getting in there. Not sure what size it is here. Didn't feel like that other one was grabbing right. Okay, this one feels better. Sorry, it does take a little time to get this sucker out of here. If you want, you could use blue Loctite or nail polish or glue when you put it back in. Mine didn't come out that very uh, difficult. So I might just do a little, little something when I send it back in. There we go. Now this will pop out. We can put that to the side. But as I'm seeing already, there is a bit of grease right there. And it was kind of wet looking. That was just a bear trap you heard. Snuff out. Okay. Well, there's not too too much grease on here, but something was causing it to uh, I have to say the seal looks really good. I think I'm going to reuse it unless I find anything other. No nicks, no chips. Very uniformed. Uh, pliable. See, not like, uh, I wish I had one offhand. Not like those hard uh, plastic ones. These actually, the umbrella style works. So, uh, the video I think was, yeah, I think I said that already. This gun was making about 23, uh, Full pound of energy, 16 grain A arms at like 925, 920, about average. I mean 820, holy cow, that was way off, sorry. Well, this looks really good. And one other reason why I do like using a rifle before I rip it all apart and tune it, some people just prefer to do it the opposite way. Um, I just can see where all the marks are uh, that are making metal metal contact and these are the areas that I can concentrate on I'll definitely clean all this up mirror finish um, you won't have much anything else up here uh, the seal pretty much has it centered but right here you can definitely see and all right this isn't bad compared to my 48 I actually put divots in here. Uh, I had so much slop in here. Um, personal preference. This one's nice. This has enough room, but it's not not really, really sloppy. So that's good. 
Uh, the tube looks good. A little greasy and oil. So I don't know. I don't know what was causing that detonation. Uh, maybe I was just giving my reason, giving myself a reason to tear this gun down. But as you can see here, wear marks. So. We might clean it up just a little bit. I mean, this is pretty polished anyways, so you can always have wear marks, but uh, this won't affect me as much as uh, this. I'd really like to clean this up. This is rough, so this is not ideal. And, all right, they are flattened. Um, they are not polished at all. They're uh, actually very rough, so uh, compared to a mirror polish. So I'll do that. Both ends. I want to see. Uh, maybe I'll just get a tune kit for it. Um, but this gun has been excellent, and I don't have a buzzing issue or anything like that. So I'm going to keep it as is for now. Um, just want to clean everything up, and definitely the trigger. The trigger is what I want to get a little smoother. All right, um, I'm going to call that pretty much it for right now. Um, I'll dive into this and uh, see if anything else I can talk about. And uh, anything else that I'll clean up or anything. I'll clean the barrel while I'm at it. It's easiest to do right now while it's all apart. So I'll take care of that. And then I'll have to relight it. And I only use one pellet, so... Yeah, that's not true. Air arms or JSB, 16 grain. That's usually the only thing that goes through this gun. But, all right. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Um, not as knowledgeable as it could have been, but uh, just a start, and I'm just recording what I'm doing over the winter projects here. So thanks for watching, and I will talk to you guys later.